What do the Great Pyramid, a golden rectangle, the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, the Five Platonic Solids, Stonehenge, the Rhythm of Venus, a Hexagram, a Heptagon, and Witchcraft have in common? Our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. The best place to hide a secret is in the open, where no one will see. What you're about to see in this first time one of a kind documentary entitled DC Street Sorcery is the revealing of hidden occult knowledge and the exposure of the conspirator of all conspirators, all with a tie in to Bible prophecy. A Bible prophecy that is being fulfilled at the very release and the viewing of this documentary. That prophecy was made by Jesus Christ. It's found in Mark 4.22. For nothing is hidden except to be revealed, nor has anything been secret, but that it should come to light. There is another prophecy in the Bible concerning eyes that could not and would not see and ears that could not and would not hear. A prophecy stating that someday those eyes would see and those ears would hear. That day would be when a certain land and certain cities were devastated. The prophecy is found in Isaiah chapter 6. Now this documentary comes at a time when our once free and great nation has been enslaved and devastated. It's actually a repeat of history, our history. For it was our forefathers who were enslaved in Egypt of old. Now, that small minority of they in Pharaoh's day had at their disposal a power. How else were they able to, as a minority, to enslave the majority? We are told in that conspiratorial story, in the book of Exodus, chapter 7, what Pharaoh and his cronies had at their disposal. It says in verse 11, then Pharaoh also called for the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, the magicians of Egypt, did the same with their secret arts. We see in this story that Pharaoh had at his disposal magicians. It's interesting to note that that word magicians means, from the Strong's Concordance, quote, a horoscopist as drawing magical lines or circles, end quote. You are going to see in this documentary the drawing of lines and circles emanating out from Washington, D.C., put there by magicians. A prayer that best be prayed before viewing further in this documentary is a prayer to be delivered from evil. For you will no doubt sense and feel the emanation of evil in this DC Street Sorcery documentary as these hidden occult things are revealed. It's nothing to fear, but it's certainly something to reckon with. And when one prays, deliver us from evil, it takes care of that. And that's why we suggest the prayer of being delivered from evil. And there's no better prayer on that than the Lord's Prayer. And so we suggest you pray it as you continue to view this documentary. The Lord's Prayer says, and we read it from the Bible, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Lastly and very briefly, in this documentary, you will also be given information concerning strongholds. The Bible not only speaks of magic and sorcery and spell casting, but of strongholds. And this nation is held right now in a stronghold. But there is a way it can be broken. 
By watching this documentary, you'll come to understand that stronghold, prophecy concerning the stronghold, and you might be, if you go to the last two chapters of this documentary, part of that remnant that break that stronghold. Well, the Bible talks about sorcery, magic, spellcasting, and strongholds. And in the very last chapter, we will give you information, just information for a special remnant for the breaking of those strongholds. The magic, the sorcery, the spellcasting, the strongholds will be broken. Section 1, the Octahedron. This is Washington, D.C., capital city of the United States of America. Using a map of Washington, we will outline the Platonic Solids, the Great Pyramid of Giza, the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, a Golden Rectangle, and more symbols of sacred geometry using the layout of Washington. The basis for creating these symbols is basic geometry, which teaches that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. We will be using several reference points on the map. The first reference point is Observatory Circle, colored in blue. Observatory Circle is the home of Vice President Joe Biden in the Naval Observatory. Observatory Circle represents the moon on our map. The connection between Observatory Circle and the moon is their diameters. Observatory Circle is 2,160 feet across. The moon's diameter is 2,160 miles across. Coincidence? Our next reference point, colored in orange, is our solar symbol, made by Columbus Circle, Union Station. The streets of Columbus Circle make the sun's rays. They are Massachusetts Avenue, F Street, E Street, Louisiana Avenue, Delaware Avenue, First Street, and Massachusetts Avenue again. Meridian Hill Park, colored in green, off 16th Street, will be our next reference point. 16th Street is the meridian line of most of the sacred geometry you will see in this video. You can see in our map of Washington, D.C. that the White House, the U.S. Capitol, the Jefferson Memorial, and the Lincoln Memorial are all colored in blue for easy reference. The first symbol we will be looking at is one of the five platonic solids, the octahedron, which is the symbol for air. Platonic solids are fundamental in the creation of the world we live in because all creation can be distilled down to these geometric shapes. The platonic solids are named after Plato, the philosopher who discovered them. Here, on a map of Washington, D.C., you see the octahedron shaded in yellow and outlined in black. What you are seeing is a three-dimensional skeletal shape of an octahedron on a two-dimensional plane, our map of Washington. Remember, geometry teaches that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. The points of the octahedron are 1, the White House, 2, Logan Circle, 3, the apex of the octahedron, 16th and U Street, 4, DuPont Circle, 5, Scott Circle, and finally back to the White House. The octahedron on the map is superimposed on a satellite image of Washington, D.C. for clarity. Do you see the resemblance? Those behind the D.C. Street Sorcery are using the octahedron, outlined in yellow, as one of the many links between the physical world and the spiritual world. The octahedron is similar to the yin-yang symbol in that it represents the union of opposites. In the occult world, the bringing together of all opposites is the highest attainable goal that sorcery wants to achieve. As an example of the union of opposites over all creation, is one world government, the new world order.
Section 2, Tetrahedron. The next platonic solid and symbol made by the layout of the streets of Washington, D.C. is the tetrahedron, the symbol of fire. Does this symbol look familiar? It's Sitco Gas Station's logo. On the map, the points that make up the tetrahedron are Washington Circle, Mount Vernon Square, and the apex, Ewan 16th Street. The connecting streets are K Street, New Hampshire Avenue, a line between U and 16th Street, and Mount Vernon Square. The center of the tetrahedron is Scott Circle. Scott Circle connects to the apex by 16th Street. Scott Circle connects to Washington Circle by Rhode Island Avenue, and it connects to Mount Vernon Square by Massachusetts Avenue. You can see in our map, the colors that make up our tetrahedron are red at the bottom, orange to the left, and a darker orange to the right. Again, for clarity, the tetrahedron is overlaid on a satellite image of Washington, D.C. Do you see the resemblance? The tetrahedron was considered by Pythagoras, a Greek philosopher in the third century B.C., to be the fire that ignites creative energies. Pythagoras, studying under the wise men, magicians of ancient Egypt, and may have drawn his knowledge about the tetrahedron from them. Those behind the D.C. street sorcery are using the tetrahedron to empower their will upon the physical plane, you. They are doing this by manipulating the element of fire, represented by the tetrahedron within America's capital. All of these platonic solids are represented in our nation's capital as a symbol of concentration, so those behind the D.C. street sorcery can manifest their will upon the rest of the nation. By focusing their energies in the capital through the symbols made by the layouts of the streets, in essence, those behind the D.C. street sorcery are at the steering wheel of our nation, and through their sorcery are creating havoc within this nation and the greater world. Below the tetrahedron, made by the White House, the Jefferson Memorial, the U.S. Capitol, and the Lincoln Memorial, is a cross. The center of the cross where the lines intersect is the Jefferson Pier Stone. The Jefferson Pier Stone corresponds to the Kabbalistic point Yassad, which will be shown later. In the 1901-1902 Macmillan Commission plan for the mall in Washington, D.C., you see the same cross inside a seven-sided casket made by the streets that are surrounding the cross using the aforementioned monuments as the connecting points. Does this symbol represent the death of Christianity? Section 3, Akazahedron. This is an acosahedron. The acosahedron is another of the platonic solids. It represents the element of water, which is an opposite element of the tetrahedron, fire. Again, the union of opposites is being represented by the element of water, the acosahedron, and the element of fire, the tetrahedron. Looking at the map, shaded in orange, is 1 20th of an acosahedron, made by the layout in Washington. The points for the acosahedron are Mount Vernon Square, Washington Circle, and the Jefferson Memorial. The White House is at the center of the acosahedron and is connected by the diameter lines New York Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue. Again, for clarity, 1 20th of an acosahedron is overlaid on a satellite image of Washington, D.C. Do you see the resemblance? As with other platonic solids we have discussed, the acosahedron is another symbol used by those behind the D.C. street sorcery as a vehicle of concentration in order to manipulate or manifest their will upon the physical plane, you. On top of the acosahedron, shaded in yellow, is a double square divided by 16th Street with four triangular areas in pink. These symbols represent the square root of five. The square root of five is the proportion that opens the family of relationships which is called Golden Proportions. The Golden Proportion is the key to the link between the world of matter and the world of spirit. The center of the symbol to the right is Logan Circle. 
The square is made up of K Street, 7th Street, U Street, and 16th Street. The center horizontal line going through Logan Circle is P Street. The center vertical line going through Logan Circle is 13th Street. This symbol opens the door to the golden ratio or phi, 1.618, which Plato had said is the key to understanding the physics of the universe and creation. This ratio phi, 1.618, is expressed again and again in our nation's capital. Section 4, Heptagon The heptagon is a seven-pointed star. It is not a platonic solid. The heptagon was used by Dr. John Dee, the 16th century mathematician, occultist, Satanist, and master spy to Queen Elizabeth I. Dr. Dee created a seal, Seelium Dei, which he used in his seances to conjure demons and gain knowledge. This seal, Seelium Dei, that Dr. D used was in the shape of a heptagon. A heptagon is also used in occult rituals today. A member of the occult group, OTO, which stands for Ordo Templi Orientis, Steffi Grant, used the heptagon in an occult painting, Vault of the Adepts. The Satanist, Aleister Crowley, also used a heptagon in his occult ceremonies and ritual practices. In our nation's capital, a heptagon is made by the layout of the monuments and streets. For clarity, shaded in pink, the points that form the heptagon are 1. Logan Circle 2. DuPont Circle 3. Washington Circle 4. The Lincoln Memorial 5. The Jefferson Memorial 6. The Hirshhorn Sculpture Garden and 7. Mount Vernon Square Again, for clarity, the heptagon is overlaid on a satellite image of Washington, D.C. Do you see the resemblance? A heptagon is also shown in a sculpture, Moon Dog, by Tony Smith, that exists in the National Gallery Sculpture Garden on Madison and 7th Street. Each point, circle, monument of the heptagon correlates to one of the seven planets known to ancient man and were considered physical manifestations of celestial intelligences. These planets are the Sun, Jefferson Memorial, Mars, Lincoln Memorial, Jupiter, Washington Circle, Saturn, DuPont Circle, the Moon, Logan Circle, Mercury, Mount Vernon Square, and Venus, the Hirshhorn Sculpture Gallery. As evidence of this correspondence between the points of the heptagon and the seven planets. At DuPont Circle is a female figure holding a globe with a ring around the globe. The globe she is holding is Saturn. Also you can see on the female figure are a five-pointed star and a six-pointed star. As another piece of evidence, the Jefferson Memorial corresponds with one of the seven planets known to ancient man, the Sun. The Jefferson Memorial also lines with the summer solstice line via Maryland Avenue. This photo of the summer solstice was taken on June 20th, 2008. You can see the sun rising over National Arboretum via Maryland Avenue. If you had a clear view from the Jefferson Memorial to the Capitol Dome, you could see the sun rise over the Capitol Dome similar to what the Druids saw when the sun rose over the heelstone at Stonehenge. In National Arboretum, a sacred grove that the Bible speaks of, are the 22 capital columns. These 22 columns mark the importance of Maryland Avenue as the summer solstice line, evidenced by a stone in the ground inscribed with the words, the illumination of the columns is a gift of Judith and Gerson Lieber. These 22 capital columns also correspond with the 22 major arcana of the tarot deck and the 22 paths of the Kabbalistic tree of life. Within the heptagon is also a five-pointed star called a pentagram and a six-pointed star called a hexagram. 
The points of the pentagram are 1. The White House, 2. Mount Vernon Square, 3. Washington Circle, 4. Logan Circle, and 5. DuPont Circle. The pentagram is also known as a symbol of Venus because of the pattern Venus traces around the Earth in its eight-year cycle. Man's body also forms a pentagram. To the right of the circle is the hieroglyphic form for Venus. The pentagram is used in Masonic temples. The pentagram in its hieroglyphic form is equivalent to the constellation Virgo and the Egyptian goddess of wisdom, Isis. In ritual magic, the pentagram is used to evoke and banish spirits. The points of the hexagram, the next symbol, are 1. Logan Circle, 2. DuPont Circle, 3. Washington Circle, 4. Mount Vernon Square, 5. Freedom Plaza, and 6. Rawlings Park. The hexagram is also used in ritual magic for evoking and banishing of spirits. You've probably seen the hexagram before. It's on the Israeli flag. It's also known as the Star of David. Section 5, The Kabbalistic Tree of Life. For clarity to the viewer, there are variant spellings of Kabbalah. The next symbol that exists within the layout of Washington, D.C. is the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. The Kabbalistic Tree of Life is found in the book the Sefer Yetzirah, the Book of Creation. The Kabbalistic Tree of Life is made by three pillars, ten worlds, and twenty-two paths. The three pillars are connected to each other and the ten worlds by the twenty-two paths. The pillars are 1. A pillar of severity, 2. A pillar of mercy, and 3. A pillar of mildness. The ten worlds are 1. Crown, 2. Wisdom, 3. Understanding, 4. Mercy, 5. Severity, 6. Beauty, 7. Victory, 8. Glory, 9, Foundation, 10, Kingdom, and an optional World 11, Knowledge. The Kabbalistic Tree of Life has been used by the Kabbalistic rabbis for the last six or seven centuries. The Kabbalistic Tree of Life, a diagrammatic view of the processes of the human mind, and explains the way in which the will, by the power of the mind, can manifest on the spiritual as well as the physical plane, as a way of creating change in the physical world that we live in. In essence, the philosophy, the Sefer Yetzirah, Book of Creation, symbolized by the Tree of Life, is the same philosophy of George Friedrich Hegel. Thesis, Pillar of Severity, Antithesis, Pillar of Mercy, Synthesis, Pillar of Mildness. What does this mean in layman's terms? You create a problem, our economy, thesis, pillar of severity. You give a solution to the problem, borrow money from the banking system, antithesis, pillar of mercy. And then our moneyed elite make all the money and you are left with nothing, synthesis, pillar of mildness. The points of the Kabbalistic tree of life within the layout of Washington are 1. You and 16th Street, Kabbalistic Point Crown, 2. Logan Circle, Kabbalistic Point Wisdom, 3. DuPont Circle, Kabbalistic Point Understanding, 4. 13th Street and New York Avenue, Kabbalistic Point Mercy, 5. 19th and Pennsylvania Avenue, Kabbalistic Point Severity, 6. The White House, Kabbalistic Point Beauty, 7. Freedom Plaza, Kabbalistic Point Victory, 8. Rawlings Park, Kabbalistic Point Glory, 9. Jefferson Pierstone, Kabbalistic Point Foundation, and if you remember, 
the Jefferson Pier stone was the center point in the cross mentioned in section 2. 10, the Jefferson Memorial, Kabbalistic Point, Kingdom. 11, an optional point, Scott Circle, Kabbalistic Point, Knowledge. The pillars that make up the Kabbalistic tree are 19th Street between DuPont Circle and E Street, Pillar of Severity, 13th Street between Logan Circle and Pennsylvania Avenue, Pillar of Mercy, 16th Street between U Street and the Jefferson Memorial. If you continue 16th Street past the White House down to the Jefferson Memorial, Pillar of Mildness, the middle pillar. For clarity, the Kabbalistic Tree of Life is overlaid on a satellite image of Washington, D.C. Do you see the resemblance? Section 6, The Great Pyramid Within the layout of our nation's capital is a pyramid, and not just any pyramid, but the pyramid, the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. The pyramid starts using the straight segment of Independence Avenue and First Street where the Cannon House office building is. Take Independence Avenue straight from First Street and we stop at Arlington National Cemetery. Going back to First Street and Independence Avenue, Using the Capitol Dome, Mount Vernon Square, Logan Circle, and the apex of our Great Pyramid, U and 16th Street, we have just connected one face of the Great Pyramid in our nation's capital. Remember, geometry teaches that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Starting at the apex of the Great Pyramid, U and 16th Street, the other face is partially drawn for us, New Hampshire Avenue. The connecting points on New Hampshire Avenue are DuPont Circle, Washington Circle, and ending at Arlington National Cemetery where it intersects with the base of our pyramid from Independence Avenue and First Street. Again, for clarity, the Great Pyramid is overlaid on a satellite image of our nation's capital. Do you see the resemblance? The passage system within the Great Pyramid at Giza is also laid out in the streets in Washington. The descending passage is Maryland Avenue, starting at the U.S. Capitol and ending at the Jefferson Memorial, which corresponds with the subterranean chamber at the Great Pyramid at Giza. The ascending passage within the Great Pyramid in Washington would be Pennsylvania Avenue, ending at Freedom Plaza. The Queen's Chamber passage is Constitution Avenue. The area between Pennsylvania Avenue, the ascending passage, and Constitution Avenue, the Queen's Chamber passage, is Federal Triangle. Federal Triangle in Washington corresponds to the triangular area between the Ascending Passage and the Queen's Chamber Passage in the Great Pyramid at Giza. The ceiling and the relieving stones above the King's Chamber are made by I Street, K Street, L Street, DeSalle Street, and M Street. The ceiling of the King's Chamber is made by Rhode Island Avenue between Connecticut Avenue and Scott Circle and Massachusetts Avenue between Scott Circle and Thomas Circles. The sides of the relieving stones would be 17th Street, 15th Street, and the meridian of the pyramid in Washington is 16th Street, hence the name Meridian Hill Park. Within Washington's Great Pyramid is also a copy of the station stone rectangle that exists at Stonehenge. The perimeter for the station stone rectangle is K Street, between Washington Circle and 13th Street, 13th Street between K Street and Logan Circle, P Street between Logan Circle and 23rd Street, and 23rd Street between P Street and Washington Circle. These streets give us the perimeter of our station stone rectangle in Washington. The two station stone rectangles that are still standing at Stonehenge are Station Stone 91 and Station Stone 93. Station Stone 91 at Stonehenge would correspond to Logan Circle in Washington. Station Stone 93 at Stonehenge corresponds to Washington Circle. Rhode Island Avenue between Washington Circle and Logan Circle is the hypotenuse. Rhode Island Avenue corresponds to the summer and winter moonrise. 
The perimeter of the station stone rectangle at Stonehenge equals the length of one side of the Great Pyramid at Giza in Egypt. The perimeter of the station stone rectangle made by the streets in Washington equals the length of a Great Pyramid in Washington. The Nile in Egypt branches to the left and to the right, so does the Potomac River branch to the left and to the right, as if we are still living in Egyptian bondage today. Section 7, Golden Rectangle. Creation is growth by division, and no mathematical formula more clearly demonstrates this truth than a golden rectangle. And a golden rectangle exists within the street patterns of our nation's capital. The streets that make the perimeter are First Street between Independence Avenue and Peace Street, Peace Street between First Street and Potomac Street in Georgetown, Potomac Street between Peace Street and Independence Avenue, Independence Avenue between Potomac Street and First Street with the eye of the golden rectangle being Washington Circle. The streets existing within the perimeter of the golden rectangle in Washington that create the internal lines of the golden rectangle are 1. Pennsylvania Avenue between the U.S. Capitol and Potomac Street in Georgetown via Washington Circle. 2. A line starting at Independence Avenue and First Street via the U.S. Capitol to Logan Circle. 3. 19th Street between DuPont Circle and Independence Avenue. 4. New Hampshire Avenue between DuPont Circle and Arlington National Cemetery. 5. I Street between Pennsylvania Avenue and the perimeter line Potomac Street in Georgetown. 6. 25th Street between New Hampshire Avenue and P Street. 7. 23rd Street between I Street and L Street. 8. L Street between 25th Street and 19th Street and 9 K Street between 25th Street and 19th Street. Can you see the resemblance? Ken McGrath, author of the book The Secret Geometry of the 1935 Dollar, documented the design of the 1935 Dollar by Edward Mitchell Weeks. Weeks was the superintendent of printing and engraving under Franklin Delano Roosevelt's administration. It was FDR who approved Weeks' design of the reverse of the 1935 dollar. Documented in Ken McGrath's book is his discovery of the use of the golden rectangle that Weeks designed in the dollar bill. This is the golden rectangle encoded in the dollar bill by Weeks. Here is the golden rectangle that exists in Washington, D.C. This is the dollar bill encoded with the golden rectangle and highlighted for clarity. This is our nation's capital. This is the highlighted $1 bill. Within our nation's capital and the $1 bill in your pocket is a golden rectangle. The golden rectangle in Washington, because of its dimensions based on fee, gives rise to a pyramid with the same angle of slope as the Great Pyramid in Egypt. Leonardo da Vinci and his friend Luca Pacioli attributed various mystical and supernatural properties to the golden rectangle. In October 2001, NASA began collecting data on cosmic background radiation with a Wilkinson microwave probe. Their harmonics generated by their probe reflect the shape of the object in which the waves generate. In the case of the NASA probe, the object that is being reflected is the universe itself. The study revealed that the universe is in the shape of a dodecahedron, which is one of the platonic solids and stands for ether, the energy of the universe. Geometry teaches within every dodecahedron is a golden rectangle. So a golden rectangle exists within the shape of the universe, a golden rectangle exists within the streets of our nation's capital, and a golden rectangle exists within the U.S. $1 bill. Why do all these golden rectangles exist? The law of similars. The golden rectangle within the dodecahedral shape of the universe acts as an energetic template from which the golden rectangle in Washington, D.C., and by extension, the golden rectangle encoded in the $1 bill draw energy from the greater in harmony with the lesser, and vice versa. The importance of the golden rectangle is demonstrated by the birthplace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Bethlehem. 
Bethlehem is positioned on our globe at a latitude of 31.68 degrees north, a position that forms a golden rectangle made by using the polar and equatorial diameters of the Earth. The key to this energetic template created by the golden rectangle is phi, 1.618. And like all the other secrets in Washington, D.C., phi is hidden in plain sight. Phi is encoded at the Eastern Star Lodge on New Hampshire Avenue. New Hampshire Avenue connects the Eastern Star Lodge to Washington Circle, the eye of the golden rectangle in our nation's capital. The address of the Eastern Star Lodge is 1618 New Hampshire Avenue, or Phi, 1.618. Coincidence? I don't think so. Section 8, the relationship between the acosahedron with the dodecahedron. The interplay between an acosahedron and a dodecahedron create an interesting figure. This figure is created by the crossing of all the eternal radiance of the acosahedron with a dodecahedron. Does the figure shaded in yellow look familiar? For clarity, the perimeter around the shaft near the top of the Washington Monument is outlined along with all external edges near the top of the Washington Monument, front and back. What you are seeing is a skeletal view of the top of the Washington Monument in three-dimensional form. What does this have to do with the layout of our nation's capital? Everything. The same three-dimensional figure, the interplay between the acosahedron and the dodecahedron, is created by using the monuments and streets in Washington, D.C. The points for this three-dimensional monument on a two-dimensional plane are 1. The Jefferson Memorial, 2. The Lincoln Memorial, 3. Washington Circle, 4. DuPont Circle, 5. The Apex U and 16th Street, 6. Logan Circle, 7. Mount Vernon Square, 8. Hershaw and Sculpture Garden, 9. The White House, and 10. Scott Circle. The streets that are used to create this three-dimensional figure are 1. 23rd Street between the Lincoln Memorial and Washington Circle 2. New Hampshire Avenue between Washington Circle and U Street 3. A line between U Street and Mount Vernon Square 4. 8th Street between Mount Vernon Square and the Hershaw and Sculpture Garden 5. Pennsylvania Avenue between Washington Circle and the White House Six. New York Avenue between the White House and Mount Vernon Square, 7. Massachusetts Avenue between Mount Vernon Square and Scott Circle, 8. Rhode Island Avenue between Scott Circle and Washington Circle, 9. 16th Street between U Street and the Jefferson Memorial, 10. A line between the Jefferson Memorial and the Hershaw and Sculpture Garden, and 11. A line between the Jefferson Memorial and the Lincoln Memorial. This energetic template that exists in the layout of our nation's capital is connected via the Washington Monument to the becker Hagen's Planetary Grid. The grid gets its name from the husband and wife team that discovered it in 1983. The law of similars comes into play again, the greater in harmony with the lesser, the greater in harmony with the lesser and vice versa. The interplay of the acosahedron and the dodecahedron is also expressed in the layout of Washington by the acosahedral face, 1 20th of an acosahedron, and the dodecahedral face, 1 12th of a dodecahedron, the pentagon. The interplay of these platonic shapes taps into the resonant frequency of the planet, shown as an exoskeleton, that encompasses the Earth. Using solar, earth, and life force energies, this complex of symbols in our nation's capital manipulates the resonant frequency of the earth, and by extension, you. Section 9, Veshika Pisces. The Veshika Pisces is the archetypal expression of Tunis. 
It is another symbol that expresses growth by division in the layout of our nation's capital. The Vesica Pisces is formed by the overlapping of two circles and the center created by the overlapping circles is considered in sacred geometry to be the portal between the physical realm and the spiritual realm. Various churches and Masonic lodges throughout Washington, D.C. show the importance of the Vesica Pisces by its use as an icon. The dimensions and geometry of the Great Pyramid at Giza relate to the Vesica Pisces, as does the dimensions of the Pyramid in Washington relate to the Vesica Pisces. In the occult world, the Vesica Pisces represents the pineal gland found in the midbrain. The pineal gland is seen as the third eye and as a way of direct experience and communication with great spiritual beings. This diagram of a wormhole by the astrophysicist Carl Schwarzschild shows in its center the Vesica Pisces. In this aerial photo of the Washington Monument, you see the monument at the center of two overlapping circles, the Vesica Pisces. Due to time constraints, we won't go into the geometric construction of the Vesica Pisces, but we will leave you this drawing of the Vesica Pisces with axis lines highlighted for those who would like the challenge of constructing the Vesica Pisces on a map of Washington, D.C. The most powerful room in our nation, the Oval Office, is a less pointed version of the Vesica Pisces. The shape of the Oval Office amplifies the biophysical energies of the human body, so these energies climb ever higher via the ladder of geometric progression in the shape of the Vesica Pisces. The Vesica Pisces is part of a greater whole, and that greater whole is the flower of life a geometric construction of many overlapping circles from which all the platonic solids can be constructed. The flower of life is another pattern created by the electromagnetic radiation of the Earth. We see on our map of Washington, D.C. the relationship between the flower of life and the image on our map from Section 8. In Washington, D.C., a museum of South American art, the Art Museum of the Americas, has in its back courtyard a statue of the Aztec deity Hosimil. This statue marks the center of the 10 mile square layout of Washington, D.C. Hosimil is known as the Prince of Flowers. It is from this statue that the flower of life begins. Section 10, in the middle of the line where M cuts the lesser line. A treasure, not of gold, not of knowledge, a treasure worth far more than both, a treasure that goes back to the time of Christ and is with us today, a treasure whose clues are spread throughout the city of Washington, D.C., in paintings, in street names, in the history of Washington, and the history of other regions of the world. The first clue to be used to find this treasure comes from the vicinity of Rennes-le-Chateau in France. It is the calm sword stone found in 1967. Notice the spear point. If we apply the shape to our nation's capital, it resembles the shape made by 1. Kentucky Avenue between Lincoln Park and Barney Circle, 2. Tennessee Avenue between Lincoln Park and Maryland Avenue, 3. Pennsylvania Avenue between the Capitol Dome and Barney Circle, and four, Maryland Avenue between the Capitol Dome and where it intersects with Tennessee Avenue. Do you see the resemblance between the Comsword Stone and the streets within our nation's capital? Our next clue as to what the treasure is, is in the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. The clue is hidden in the painting Sacrament of the Last Supper by Salvador Dali. The painting is in the golden rectangle proportion. The painting's length is 105 inches divided by its width, 65 inches, equals 1.615 inch, which is very close to the golden proportion of phi, 1.618. Dali's painting, by using the dimensions of a golden rectangle, forms a pyramid with the apex of the pyramid resting on the Adam's apple 
of the floating figure. The painting shows Jesus Christ with the 12 apostles. Who is the figure floating above Christ? Revelation by omission. Our next clue is the word Potomac, as in Potomac River and Potomac Street in Georgetown. If you remember, it was one of the perimeter lines that creates the golden rectangle we covered in section seven. In the Algonquin language, the universal language of the Eastern Seaboard Indian tribes, the word Potomac means something brought or the place where something is brought. East Capitol Street is the line of demarcation between the lettered streets in Northeast Washington and the lettered streets in Southeast Washington. You have a North A Street and a South A Street. There is no North B Street or South B Street. Then you progress through the lettered streets of Northeast Washington and Southeast Washington, stopping at where J Street should be. There is no North or South J Street. Revelation by omission. Our next clue is a relic found in the Burgundy region of France in a temple owned by the Knights Templar. This relic is a lid from a coffer, another name for a strong box. On the coffer's lid is a carved moon, a sun, a pentagram, and a heptad, a seven-pointed star, or what could be called a heptagon. This coffer lid is the clue to the city this treasure is hidden the city of Washington, D.C. The moon, the moon. The sun, the sun. The pentagram, the pentagram. And the heptagon, the heptagon. And the treasure, the head of John the Baptist, which gives the city of Washington spiritual power to draw from. Section 11, Cemeteries. The amalgamation of symbols in our nation's capital creates a talisman of protection, a protective amulet, as well as a means by which human energies from the living and the dead are harnessed. This harnessing of energies acts as a chariot for our sorcerers in Washington, which gives them the ability to have direct experience and communication with great spiritual beings. There are two ways by which this harnessing of human energies occurs in our nation's capital. Living energies are harnessed from the National Mall during demonstrations, such as the anti-war demonstrations of the 60s, and as we just saw, from the presidential inauguration on the Mall in January of 2009. Spiritual energies are harnessed by the sorcerers in Washington from the cemeteries, Arlington National Cemetery, Congressional Cemetery, and Fort Lincoln Cemetery in Maryland. In Congressional Cemetery, spiritual energies are harnessed by the 166 cenotaphs. Cenotaphs is a Greek word meaning empty tomb, a monument to the dead whose remains may be buried elsewhere. In ancient Egypt, cenotaphs were ritualistic and ceremonial in nature. A cenotaph represents the handle end of a sword with a blade stuck into the ground collecting energies. These 166 cenotaphs act similar to what voodoo priests called a canary, a clay jar used in collecting the astral soul of a person for the empowerment of the voodoo priest. The cenotaphs were designed by the architect of the U.S. Capitol, Benjamin Latrobe. At Fort Lincoln Cemetery, the harnessing of spiritual energies occurs from the mausoleum in the cemetery, evidenced by the stained glass window showing a soul being harnessed. In the back of the mausoleum, seen from a small courtyard, is the goddess from Isaiah chapter 47, verses 8 through 9, the goddess to whom the souls are being harnessed to. Fort Lincoln Cemetery is connected to the White House via the straight segment of New York Avenue. Spiritual energies are being harnessed at Arlington National Cemetery from the JFK grave and from the Lincoln Memorial on the National Mall. The assassinated presidents are linked in death by the Arlington Memorial Bridge, and both assassinated presidents were linked in life by the law of similars. Lincoln had a secretary named Kennedy, 
Kennedy had a secretary named Lincoln. Lincoln was shot in Ford's theater. Kennedy was shot in a Ford Lincoln. Lincoln's vice president was Andrew Johnson. Kennedy's vice president was Lyndon Johnson. Andrew Johnson was born in 1808. Lyndon Johnson was born in 1908. Both assassins were later killed, and both assassinated presidents were shot in the head on a Friday while seated next to their wives. The assassinated presidents are linked to Washington Circle via 23rd Street and the Arlington Memorial Bridge. And Washington Circle is the eye of the golden rectangle we saw in Section 7. Washington Circle is the point from which the logarithmic spiral begins that connects the past to the future, the Lincoln assassination to the Kennedy assassination, the harnessing of life force energies. Section 12, Chi Chakras. QI, pronounced Chi, is a Chinese word for the life force energy that flows throughout the body. Chi flows through the body by pathways called meridians. Meridian pathways are rivers of energies that bring vital force to the human body. The main meridian pathway of energy in the human body is the spinal column. Along the spinal column are seven force centers or whirls of energy known as chakras. These chakras exist in the surface of the etheric body of man. These seven chakra centers along the human spine are 1. Base or root chakra 2. Sacral chakra, procreative organs 3. Navel chakra, solar plexus 4. Heart chakra 5 throat chakra, six, brow or third eye chakra, pineal gland, and seven, crown chakra, that links to pure consciousness. Animals have meridian pathways of energies, such as this horse, as does planet Earth. Cities also have meridian lines of energy. The meridian line pathway of energy, or spinal column in our nation's capital, is 16th Street, which Meridian Hill Park resides on. This meridian pathway of energy crosses seven points which correspond to the seven chakras. These seven points along the meridian pathway of energy, 16th Street, are 1. Base or root chakra, Jefferson Memorial 2. Sacral or procreative chakra, Jefferson Pierstone 3. Solar plexus or navel chakra, zero mile marker 4. Heart chakra, White House 5. Throat Chakra, Lafayette Park 6. Brow or Third Eye Chakra, Pineal Gland, Scott Circle and 7. Crown Chakra, U and 16th Street Chakra of Pure Consciousness which links to the world of spirit. These seven chakra points along a meridian pathway of energy, 16th Street, are centers of activity that receives, assimilates, and expresses life force energy that has an effect throughout our nation's capital and the world. In summation, what the DC street sorcerers have done is create a powerful array of images that act as directive agents for the will of the sorcerer. And these images are carriers of psychic energy that have an effect on the microcosm of Washington, DC, and the macrocosm. The world. Depending how caught up you may be in the sorcery magician spell casting that you've just seen in this DC sorcery documentary, there is something you should have seen. 
and that something you should have seen is called design. Obviously what you've seen is design. This man was once caught in Washington DC during a traffic jam and I remember while there thinking to myself what kind of idiot laid out these streets. There are streets going this way and that at this angle and that angle coming in this way and that and there's circle streets here and circle streets there and there seemed to be no design or rhyme or reason to it. Well there was, there is a design and it was no idiot that was involved in the designer. Now here's a truth we need to understand. Where there is a design, there is a designer. The designer, Satan. That designer is the conspirator, the conspirator of conspirators. Now there have been many books written about conspiracy, and many of those that tell you about conspiracy make their money telling you about conspiracy, and many of them are, believe it or not, part of the conspiracy. For they work real hard to keep you from the book that tells you of the conspirator of conspirators, of the conspiracy of all conspiracies. They work hard to keep you from knowing about the conspirator and the book that tells you about the conspirator, the Bible. The very first story in the Bible after the creation story is a conspiracy story. It's a story of Satan conspiring. And in that story, we realize that Satan had a plan all along. And it's told there, that beginning of that conspiratorial plan, right there in the book, that they keep you from. Now you may say, I don't believe in that book, or I don't believe in Satan. But I say to you, that the one who escaped the grasp of death after three days and three nights in the tomb did and does, and he told you and I in John 8, 44, you are of your father the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father the devil. The designers of Washington, D.C. were doing the desires of their father the devil, the master architect, you might say and they carried out his desires and will. Again, Jesus said there were those who were of their father the devil that desired to do his works and carry out his plan and his design. Remember, where there is a design, there is a designer. Now they have worked hard to condition us and program us to feel foolish if we believe in conspiracy. In fact, the script that they give their conservative talk show hosts will include calling us conservative kooks if we were to believe in such a thing. But people think about this. If there was a conspiracy, there would be conspirators, people involved in the conspiracy. And what would be the one thing that those conspirators would want us to believe? They would want us to believe it's foolish to believe there's a conspiracy. Or let me put it this way, what is one of the things they would not want us to believe? They would not want us to believe in conspiracy. So they would call you a conspiracy kook if you did. And so many, afraid of some kind of title, follow the programming that's given to them. Now there will be many that view this DC Street Sorcery documentary that do believe in conspiracy, but they don't believe in the conspiracy of conspiracies. They don't believe in the conspirator of conspirators, the devil. Don't be so foolish as to deny the designer called Satan. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, And the great serpent was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So we see in the Bible that deception, which is another word for conspiracy, is carried out by the devil and his angels. Don't be so foolish as to deny that conspiracy. 
Many who do believe in conspiracy will foolishly deny that this aspect of the conspiracy exists. The Bible says of such in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no man. The Bible also tells of conspiracy, as we've mentioned before, that took place long ago in the land of Egypt. That is found in the book of Exodus chapter 1. We read there in Exodus chapter 1, starting with verse 8, Now a new king arose over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, I want you to notice, he said to his people, I want you people to know that not everyone are our people. They might look like it, but he said to his people, Behold, the people of the sons of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal wisely with them. And we'll stop there and just point out that there was a conspiracy story again. This time, in this conspiracy story, a minority of a certain people were able to enslave a majority of a mightier people. How did they do it? They had at their disposal magicians. We read of this in the story, this conspiratorial story, in chapter 7 of Exodus. I read, Then Pharaoh also called for the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, the magicians of Egypt, did the same with their secret arts. The word for magician, according to Strong's Concordance, means cartom, a horoscopist, as drawing magical lines or circles. Let me repeat, as drawing magical lines or circles. Such secret occult knowledge existed then, and that same secret occult magic knowledge exists now. Now, there is knowledge that we are not to have. We read about that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 12, concerning the tree of knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which man was commanded not to touch. Now, concerning the knowledge of evil and how they, and there is a they and there is an us, how they got it, we tell that at our website, dcstreetsorcery.com. It comes from an ancient book, as far as the story telling how they got that knowledge, a book called the Book of Enoch. Now, the Book of Enoch was once in the Bible canon. The Bible book, the Book of Jude, speaks of the Book of Enoch. In that Book of Enoch is told how they, the watchers, got the secret knowledge. But we tell that at the website dcstreetsorcery.com. Concerning knowledge, 